wanted to ask you too about the technology part of it. I liked how they they were kind of in my reading were kind of like, yeah, maybe these alarms that everyone uses all the time isn't there's not the strongest evidence behind them, but that doesn't mean we should discount technology as something that could potentially help us in the future. Um, or maybe it's happening now, but just doesn't have that widespread dissemination. Are there technologies that are on your radar or that hypothetically you were like, oh, I wish this would exist or something that'd be interesting to try? Yeah. Um, so something that happened at our hospital during the pandemic was remote video monitoring. So it's just live mm, feeds. There's no yep. recording. Um, but because it was so difficult to get into rooms quickly because you had to put on all your PPE, yeah. um, it became evident very quickly that that was actually a really helpful thing to have mm -hmm. because, you know, we would have, there would be plenty of people at the nursing station all the time and you can see the live monitoring and, you know, you can hear, if you hear an alarm get up, going off, someone's looking at the camera to see what's going on. And sometimes maybe they're just adjusting in bed and the bed alarm went off. Right. But yeah. at other times you can see them trying to physically get out of bed and you're like, Oh shoot, I need to make oh, a dash for go. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we've actually maintained that technology now too, um, and to have found it helpful. Something that we came across during our fall work, um, and we meaning the PT counterpart and I, um, was an article that had a dedicated role, um, and that was either usually a tech, like a patient care technician who their sole role was to watch the cameras and then mm. they could speak yeah. into the cameras and tell people to sit down or to wait for help or hey someone's coming. coming yeah um and that was their job and so you have one person dedicated to looking at 30 cameras you know however many beds are on that unit um and what that article found was their it was cost effective because they needed less sitters because oftentimes, you know, mm -hmm. there's usually more than one sitter on a floor, depending on the floor. Um, and so it decreased the need for sitters that were there due to fall risk. It increased like the ability to understand what was actually happening without having to make a run for it um, every single mm -hmm. time. Uh, it was easier to know, hey, like, looks like they want to go to the bathroom. Can someone help them really quickly? Uh, so we found that was an article that really suggested the need um, or benefit of these remote video monitoring systems. Mm -hmm. Now, something I've come across is that there's definitely home-based systems for this stuff. Like you can install cameras in your home to watch yeah. from your phone, right? Like the Nest cameras and Googles and yep. all that fun stuff. Um, I've heard frequently from patients and their family members that they've installed these cameras at home and it's easy for them to speak into them and remind them what's going on or saying, hold on, mom, I'll be right there. Um, you know, and so I feel like that was a good translation between like home and hospital where yeah, I can yep. see the consistency there. Yeah. The other things we've often used at home nowadays is like wearable technology, right? Mm -hmm. We have like the fall detection apps and services on various wearable technology. That's something that I wonder if that could be translated into like yeah. inpatient settings, because I feel that that would maybe have even more of a likelihood of knowing like, okay, someone's heart rate's going up, their blood pressure's dropping, um, and they're about to get up. Should we be worried because could they pass out, right? Uh, what you just mentioned, where you first get up and you feel dizzy sometimes because of that low blood pressure. I mean, that happens mm -hmm. to a lot of people in the hospital, especially. Yeah. And as many times as we try to monitor them, if they're trying to get up, they might. this might even be you know, a patient who's completely independent otherwise, and they're fine getting up and going, you know, going around their room by themselves and no one's worried mm -hmm. about them. But all of a sudden, their blood pressure is dropping and their heart rate's going up, and nobody's in there to monitor that. But it beeps at the nursing station or at the yeah. nurse's phone and it says, Hey, they're up and about, their vitals are off. Maybe someone should go in there. So that's something that I, I wonder if it could translate more into the inpatient setting. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to touch on something I came across uh, during my 
you know, just general research of like fall prevention and what different facilities are doing. Um, there is a AI company working on remote monitoring, um, mm. but the remote monitoring is not even in house. It's like at the company headquarters and they have we'll talk about being cost effective. Yeah. And so they, um, this company is called safely you, if you ever want mm. to look into it. Um, but they're currently only in nursing facilities and assisted living facilities. And, uh, I wonder if eventually maybe they might plan to go into hospital settings. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. but what they do is they actually hire occupational therapists and physical therapists, uh, internally to their company uh, and this is an ai like tech company and so they hire therapists to monitor these videos and uh if there is a fall that happens that is unwitnessed then mm. the ot and the pt or the pt who is monitoring the fall does a full analysis on what happened and they provide interventions based on that to back to the facility and so it's completely remote like it's not even in-house anymore yeah and so you know i i don't know how much the, they cost for <laughs> you know mm -hmm. from like an external source but um it that was really interesting to me that this doesn't even need to be in-house anymore and it can be yeah. outsourced and how do, what does that look like that feels like you and I should have invented that. <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs>